everyone, I'm Latia. And I'm Richard Camry. We're both underwriters at Optimum Re and are here to present today's case notes on NT Pro BNP. All right, so this case we have a Chinese citizen who owns a home in the U.S. and has a valid U.S. nexus. He also had an elevated NT Pro BNP at 467 on his insurance labs, and he didn't have any other cardiac risk factors. We had limited records from the U.S.-based PCP with a normal exam done in 2023. We also had limited records from his Chinese-based PCP, and he was last seen in 2022. He had a normal ECG and a TTE at that time. We did decide to postpone this due to the elevated NT Pro BNP. After that, they did come in asking for a reconsideration request with a repeat NT Pro BNP. They also provided a ECG, TTE, CXR, and carotid Doppler. All of these were within normal limits. However, these were all completed in China, and this was after the postponement. Right. So with all this information, I mean, sorry, gut check time, um, how do we put all these pieces together, uh, knowing that these tests were completed uh, without a possibly appropriate chain of uh, custody in China, uh, differences in lab values. Um, you know, my initial gut reaction would be, you know, still a little shaky on this one. I probably want some more information. How about you, Latia? I definitely agree with you, Richard. Definitely. All right. Well, let's have a look at some of the uh, factors on this case before we uh, make our judgment call. So there were some things that we did feel really good about in this case. So I'll give you the favorables here. Uh, he did have no other risk factors or no other cardiac risk factors. So we were fine with that and felt good about that. Right. He also had multiple cardiac testing that was completed and those results were also favorable. And then he did have the repeat lab that showed an NT Pro BMP that was within normal range. So that also made us feel good as well. Yeah, I agree. It's Usually, you just expect to see another lab result. You wouldn't get this plethora of uh, other tests, um, you know, sort of backing that up. Um, and on the unfavorable side, you know, yes, the repeat testing uh, was within normal limits. Um, some of the things, as I alluded to earlier, are you know, we still have this chain of custody issue. We we do have. You know, it was provided in Chinese and translated into English, so there may be, you know, gaps within there. Um, even within certain jurisdictions, you know, China versus U.S., you can have different lab value, you know, normal values within the population, and in some cases that can result in much higher, even like two times normal. Uh, more so on, let's say, looking at these two markets between the U.S. and China, you, it's common to see higher normal LFT type levels um, within that jurisdiction. So we know in underwriting there is a difference between BNP and NT pro BNP. So I'm just going to give you a couple differences in those so that we can differentiate between the two. Right. So BNP is a vasoactive peptide and has a shorter life than NT pro BNP and an inactive peptide, which tends to circulate longer and can de detect earlier forms of heart failure. Whereas BNP is biologically active as a hormone. NT pro BNP is cleared passively from the body and is not biologically active. Therefore, BNP has a much shorter half-life. NT pro BNP has a longer half-life. So that's usually why we like to see an NT pro BNP versus a BNP. Yeah. And just in a more general sense, you, you can think of BNP as a more non-specific type test with NT pro BNP uh, being more specific to uh, endothelial uh, information. So let's just throw a couple what ifs in there or just look at things a little bit differently. So in La La Land, if we just wanted to say, for instance, if we had an NT Pro BNP that was between 301 and 399, then what would we do in that case? Yeah, uh, my position would be uh, you would likely default to a, a higher 
substandard um, type of risk. I mean, it all depends if you're a half full or half glass uh, empty type of underwriter. You, you know, you could potentially build a case for maybe for an, another postponement. But when you have these other tests in the background, sort of supporting, um, you know, uh, a non-significant inflammation risk, um, I would go with the rate. Okay, so let me throw something else at you, Richard. Sure. What if the doctor had been a U.S.-based doctor and the repeats were done here? Would we feel better about that or would we still want them to redo the test? I, I would definitely take this one at Sandra. You would have a verifiable chain of custody uh, and you would know that you know the lab values um, would be comparable between the insurance testing that we initially saw and the hospital, it, you know, it, it'd be all right in my opinion. I think you're very smart about that, and I agree. All right. Well, as always, um, if you have any questions uh, regarding this case notes, you know, feel free to reach out to us, and uh, it was a pleasure presenting to you. We appreciate your time today.